In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two vertical pulley problems, one with a single pulley and two masses on it, and then one with a system of pulleys pulling up an eight kilogram mass with a certain acceleration. So for our first one, we're going to take a look at this system right here, and then we're going to solve for the acceleration of the system, and then an FT, the force of tension in that rope connected to the two and five kilogram block. Now, anytime you have a system of a couple of things, typically you're going to take a look at both things as one large system. So if we put these two as one big large system, we're going to take a look at all the forces that are external in the system. So not anything that's within this dotted line. So if we do that, we have a couple of different things going on. We have the force of gravity of the five kilogram mass, and we have the force of gravity for the two kilogram mass. Now, the way that those work is a little bit different than the average force problem, because you wanna look at a single direction along the pulley as being positive and the opposite direction as negative. So because I see that this is two kilogram and this is five kilogram, we can safely assume that the five kilogram provides more force, hence making the two kilogram go up and over and then two, five kilogram just go downwards. So I'm gonna call this direction positive. Okay, and the exact opposite direction would be negative. So positive is anything up and over in this direction. All of that is gonna be positive because it's along the motion of the way the pulley is moving. Now, if we're taking a look at the whole system, it is Fg from the five kilogram minus Fg from the two kilogram. And that makes the whole system move. The whole system is seven kilograms times A, the acceleration. So my Fg5 is gonna be in the positive direction because it's along my arrows that I made here. And the two kilogram a mass, or excuse me, the Fg from the two kilogram mass is in the exact opposite direction, so that's negative. So I put Fg5 minus Fg2. Now we can go ahead and plug in some of our numbers. We have mass times 9.8 for the five, and then mass times 9.8 for the two equals seven kilograms times A. And then that leaves us with 29.4 newtons equals seven kilograms times A, because five times 9.8 is 49, two times 9.8 is 19.6, subtract the two and you got 29.4. Go ahead and finish off by dividing each side by seven. And then you have your acceleration of the system, which is 4.2 meters per second squared. Now, if you wanted to find the FT, um, you can find the FT in two different ways. What you want to do is take a look at each individual object. We don't want to look at this as one big seven kilogram system because we don't have any FT because the FT is internal. It's inside of our system. So if we just take a look at the five kilogram block, it looks like this. We have the FG and then we have the FT. So remember FG is in the positive direction because it goes along this line right here, which is downwards for the five kilogram object. So the FG is our positive. So we'll say FG is positive minus that FT. And that equals the mass of five kilograms times the acceleration. So the FG for the five kilogram object is still five times 9.8. So we're gonna call that 49 minus ft equals five times a but we have our a our a is 4.2 so five times 4.2 is going to be 21 newtons subtract 49 from both sides and then you have negative ft equals negative 
28 newtons and then the negatives drop out. Okay, so that's how you can find the FT. The other way you could have solved for it, which you don't need to, is you could just analyze the two kilogram block by itself. If you were to do that, the setup would look very similar to this one right here, except our two kilogram block would have um, this FG down and the FT upwards, and then you would set it up as being FT in the positive direction. So we'd have FT minus FG equals two times A. Okay, all the steps would be pretty much the same, except your FG would be two times 9.8, and then your 4.2 would be plugged into here, and you would still end up getting 28 newtons anyways. So you, like I said, you can use either one of the blocks, but you wanna make sure you analyze it individually so that you can pull out the FT, but you have to make sure you change your mass because now you're looking at, at an individual object. All right, now for our second one, um, we have an eight kilogram block being pulled up by this certain pulley system and it has an acceleration of two meters per second squared. So the question is how much force do you have to apply downwards on this rope in order to accelerate this eight kilogram block upwards at this rate over here. So if we take a look at our system, we basically just have an FG, force of gravity down, and then we'll just call this a single FT as of now. And then later on, we'll, we'll take a look at it as more individualized FT components that are pulling up on that eight kilogram block. So we know that we have a force of tension moving it upwards. The force of gravity opposing it equals that mass times the acceleration of two meters per second squared. We know that we can get FG by doing MG mass times 9.8, which is 78.4 equals 8 times 2, which is 16. And then if we add 78.4 to both sides, then we get an FT value. of 94.4 newtons. Okay, now if we take a look at our system again, one more time, um, we have a system of pulleys, so it's not just a single force of tension, but we know that the total force acting up or upwards is 94.4 newtons. So if we take a look at our system and what's acting on it, we have one, two, three, four forces of tension upwards. So if we just take that total of 94.4 Newtons and divide it by four, then each of those ropes has a force of tension of 23.6. So our answer for our, what is the force applied downwards? It's 23.6 Newtons applied downward that provides that same tension throughout that string, which is basically four small upward forces of tension that are all 23.6 Newtons. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up and solve vertical pulley problems. Thank you for watching and listening.